Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm at London Heathrow where I'm about to fly to Doha with Qatar Airways. A few months ago I flew in their first class product and a lot of subscribers mentioned that I should check out their new Q-Suite business class product. So here it is. The internet was awash with, well frankly, near fatuous praise for the product and I wasn't sure if it actually was amazing or if people just tend to say nice things if you give them a free business class flight. Since I was in London, I figured I'd check it out myself. As with all my videos, I pay with my own cash and the airline doesn't know I'm coming. The journey began at check-in where I was able to skip the queue as I was travelling in business and it directed towards the fast track line through customs. Being 5am, it was pretty quiet and shortly afterwards I was in Qatar's premium lounge which is shared with first and business class passengers. As with all of their lounges, they don't allow one world status passengers inside which keeps it quiet although I feel it kind of goes against the one world principles of sharing lounges. Anyway, that's a debate to be had on online forums. The lounge itself is really impressive and I've created a separate detailed video and a link to that is in the video description below. As it's a shared business and first class lounge, the standard of the service is really brought up to first class with table service and a small a la carte menu. There was also a large selection of food that you could serve yourself as well. I had a quick bite and then relaxed and waited for my flight. Another detail I really like is that the boarding pass comes in this flash pocket. It really does raise the standard of the whole experience as I've only ever had similar pockets in first class. My bus to Doha was a Boeing 777-300ER. It was actually brand new and was only delivered to Qatar Airways the previous week. The business cabin is divided into two sections with my seat being in the second one. The seats are all in a one-to-one -one layout which means they all have direct aisle access. The window seats alternate between forward and rearward facing and although I thought it may feel weird, it's actually perfectly fine sitting backwards. If anything, it makes it easier to sit and gawk out the windows staring at the massive General Electric hair dryers. The middle seats are obviously best for couples with an adjustable divider that lowers. In fact, the middle seats convert into a bed as you see with this footage I took after takeoff. The crew were really proud of their product and offered to set up the bed in a pair of empty seats. I should also say that you can open up four middle seats for a family or a group of friends, although I wasn't able to get this on camera as there were other passengers in them. Shortly after I took my seat, a welcoming drink was brought around and a warm towel. As it was still early in the morning, I went for fruit juice. Grapes, I think, from France. As always, let's go through this seat in more detail. In front of you is a large touch screen, although I'll come back to that in more detail later. Below that is a fold-out table which feels pretty sturdy. And next to that is a ledge where you can store stuff. Within easy reach are the buttons for the seat adjustment, in-flight entertainment if you don't want to use a touchscreen, and power plugs. It's a minor issue, I know, although a lot of airlines have power and USB ports in obscure places. I had to use the torch on my phone to find it in Lufthansa's 747-8 seat. By the way, a link to that review below. But this is well placed in your line of sight. Between you and the aisle is more storage space and this whole thing rises to form an armrest. And above that are more lights. On the other side of you, you've also got another adjustable armrest. 
Now I'm glad to see that they've retained the overhead lockers. Some people prefer to delete them and have a more open looking roof, although I'd just rather more storage. And here's something I really appreciate, overhead air vents. As I always say, I find aircraft cabins far too hot generally and love a constant flow of air. And of course, just importantly, this seat offers a fantastic view of the GE90 powering the aircraft. Now just before we leave, here's the amenity kits which are pretty well stocked. There's toothbrushes and shavers in the toilet and I'll show you that later. And of course, I'll be giving the amenity kit away to our subscriber with more details of that later in the video. Another feature that I really like about this seat is that you can reach the leg rest while still sitting up straight. Means you can get comfy even when your seat is in the takeoff position. It took about 15 minutes of filming to capture the slats deploying and I also spotted this kangaroo a long way from home. Now people who visit Heathrow frequently will know how busy the place is. It took us around 30 minutes to cross the airport to get to our runway. With most of the time spent waiting to cross this runway. There was just a constant stream of piddly little A320s. We finally got to our runway and after waiting even longer, we started our six and a half hour journey to Doha. I'll stop rabbiting on and the mute the music so you can hear the engine spool up. The view as we crossed southeastern Britain was impressive and once we levelled out, the in-flight service began. Warm nuts, presented in a way which Korean airlines would approve of, were delivered and a top-up of fruit juice. While the 777 is a sturdy aircraft, it's now a generation behind the newer 787 and A350, so the air inside is drier. Fortunately for me, Qatar offer a facial mist which sprayed something into my face. After wiping off my glasses, breakfast was served with a snack platter which tasted fantastic. The entire menu, which I'll run through at the end of the video, was served on a dine on demand basis. So essentially you choose when and what you want to eat. I hadn't eaten for a few hours and figured it was time for breakfast number two. I'm not much of a foodie although it was certainly some of the best business class food I've had. The vegetables, which I figure are probably pretty hard to work with, tasted perfectly fresh. And of course, my glass of fruit juice never ran dry and with very friendly and proactive service from the crew. After that was cleared, a coffee and a snack were brought around. No keen av geeks will have noticed that the view of the engine has slightly changed as I managed to move two seats forward. There was something mesmerizing and potentially hypnotizing about that swirly duvalaki, and yes that is the technical term, and the turbine blades which you could see better from this angle. Now I should mention here that the doors do close forming an enclosed suite. I did wonder if it might feel a little claustrophobic although it's really wide and that wasn't really an issue at all. Since I was up at 4am to get to the airport early, I figured I might try and have a nap. While I went for a walk around the aircraft, the friendly crew converted my seat into a comfortable bed. After a short nap, I was up again and had some coffee and some different grape juice. I hadn't eaten for around 3 hours and figured it was time for some mini sliders. Just watching this now as I edit the video is making me quite hungry. I should mention that Qatar offer Wi-Fi on board and from memory the first 60 minutes was free. 
I did the obligatory social media check-in, but otherwise, I'd rather watch movies. Now, by the way, a shout out to my Instagram and Facebook pages. Make sure you check them out for the latest updates, videos, and aviation photos like these ones. Another warm towel was brought around and some chocolates. Now let's run through the in-flight entertainment. You can choose between using the remote or the touchscreen directly. The actual hardware is pretty good with the screen providing a crisp, clear image. The touch response was also pretty good. The content itself was reasonable and kept me reasonably entertained when I wasn't looking out the windows. Now our route took us along the eastern border of Iraq and Iran, where I saw quite an interesting circle of life for oil. Down there you've got fuel refineries uh, refining, and then later on there's just a constant stream of oil tankers trundling through the Persian Gulf. Of course, the circle ends with explosions of fire within the GE90 just a few metres from my right leg. The air was also full of excitement with a constant barrage of aircraft flying from the Middle East back to Europe. I don't know about you, but I'm uncontrollably excited thinking about the 777X's folding wingtips. I'm sure they'll look amazing and can't wait to see them in a few years. Anyway, I might also mention these cool pillows which are unique to the Q-Suites and you're allowed to take them with you. Well, I hope you are. I was told I could. I had more coffee because I knew I had a long night of video editing ahead of me and we started our descent down into Doha. I'll conclude the flight while the keenest of av geeks enjoyed the view out the window as the slats, spoilers and flaps are flap about. The wing on a modern airliner really is a piece of art, certainly far more interesting than someone missing an ear or a lady staring at you from every direction. Anyway, I was really keen to check out the Q suite for myself and it certainly lived up to expectations. It was actually quite amazing. The seat itself is fantastic. I don't know what magic they've used, but they've managed to make a suite private, yet not feel too claustrophobic, and fit four of them across the width of the airplane. The food and drink, as you saw, was impressive. Now, as I've come to expect with Qatar, the service was flawless. My primary flight attendant and the chief flight attendant all came and introduced themselves at the start of the flight. The meals were served and removed properly, and drinks kept full. As I said earlier, they're clearly very proud about the Q-Suite product and offered to make the double bed up for me just so that I could take photos. Now in all seriousness, and I'm not being paid to say this, you could add a centimetre to the seat width, offer more expensive booze and fish eggs, and this would be a pretty reasonable first class product. In fact, it does raise questions about Qatar's own A380 first class product, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. And by the way, the fantastic business class service continued on the ground with a separate customs queue in the arrival lounge. Now, as soon as you enter the main customs hall, immediately turn left towards the lounges and in there, I found my very own customs officer. And as always, I'll be giving away the amenity kit to a subscriber. You've got 30 days to enter from this video being published and all you need to do is comment below with the text QR Amenity Kit in brackets. Full details of the giveaway are in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video of what was a fantastic flight. Make sure you check me out on Instagram and Facebook as well as check out my channel for many more aviation videos. in the background here you can see a Qatar A330 and my review of that business class product will be online in a few weeks so make sure you're subscribed so YouTube lets you know. Safe travels, I'll see you another time and coming up are the menus.